This is going to be a tutorial for the pin warp effect, so uh, first I'm going to show you some examples. Alright, so now I'm going to show you what kind of footage you need to capture to make an angle like that. Now what I like to do is always have something in the foreground. This thing's lagging out really bad, but I always like to have something in the foreground just so you can create parallax and even more options for depth of field. Okay, so I'm going to, this is the angle I'm going to use. And what we're going to do is keep the camera perfectly still. We've got, we've got the angle we like. We've got something in the foreground, which happens to be one of the guys we're moving. And we've got the main center of focus. And then we have a background. So it's it looks like there's three separate fields right now. There's foreground, midground, background, which is going to make it a lot easier to create depth of field. If you have a lot of things in the foreground, there's more things you have to rotoscope. And if you have things in the midground, it might not look as good. So the fact that they're separated like this is going to really help for when we create depth of field later. Alright, so what we're going to do is actually just record this how it is right here. But make sure you do not move the camera. If you move the camera, you, you fucked up and you got to redo the whole thing. So I'm just going to record for about 10 seconds just to be safe. So now what you want to do is you want to keep recording, but you want to fast forward without moving the camera anywhere. So you're just going to pull on the joystick or the fucking trigger, whatever. And you're going to wait until the screen is completely clear so it's a blank slate. You have the exact same angle, just no people or nothing in, nothing that will be moving is in the scene. So I'm just going to move. All right, I'm going to use this. So it's just a blank slate. This is going to be our background. So I'm just going to leave it for another 10 seconds starting now. All right, now that you recorded that, that's all the footage we're going to need. And we're going to take this one clip just into After Effects. OK, we're in After Effects, and you notice I'm blue because for some reason the built-in fucking camera can't white balance properly, so that's just going to stay like that because who cares. So, I mean After Effects, I have my clip right here, you can double check through it. You got the part where the two guys are there, you got the opening where there's the blank slate. So what we're going to do is we're make two composition. So I'm going to bring this down twice. This one right here, where we already have the guys in the foreground. I'm just going to right click, go time, freeze frame. Now I'm going to find, I'm going to click on the bottom one and find where there's nobody in the foreground, which is right there. And on that one, I'm going to right click, go time, freeze frame. I'm actually going to duplicate the top one that has, because it's going to have two guys, so we're going to be cutting them. So now I go back to my composition. If I take away these two frames, it's just a blank slate like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotoscope each guy. So right now, I'm just going to name my top layer. Uh, red just for red guy and then blue for the bottom guy this will be background so I'm going to go into rotoscoping them um, if you don't know what that is just google it but it's just where you use the pen tool and I'm going to highlight around the guy until he's soloed out and I'll do that for both guys and I'll be right back okay so I have them separated now as you can see uh, the top one's the red guy I can just turn that off the second one's the blue guy now when I'm doing this I realize it'd be better if he wasn't glowing because you would expect that to move which it's not going to and there's a line across him here where the the bullet went originally but this is good enough for now it's what we're gonna do so basically you're just gonna see the picture and imagine or you're visualizing how the movement would go or maybe you just watched it when you had it originally so we can go to our puppet tool here or sorry here we go puppet tool which is up top we're gonna make some joint markers on the guys so for the blue guy we're going to keep it nice and simple. We can give him a head mark, give him a shoulder mark, a hand mark right here, two knee marks, and one foot mark together because it's all kind of connected. The less the better, but you still want to keep the movement correct. Now for the red guy, we're going to have the elbow here, um, somewhere in the arms, a hip, and a leg spot. And that'll be good enough. Now we're going to click on the red layer, hit U, so you can see all your pin positions. And we're going to go about, uh, we're only going to make this actually about 10 seconds. Click on the puppet tool, so you can see these here. And you're going to move them how you think you would move. So I'm going to make, and bring his gun down a bit, oh, which I can't do, see? Because it's cut off, I have to make him raise the gun. Because you can't bring down part of the gun because there isn't anything there. So he's going to raise the gun a bit. He's going to tuck this back. He's going to take his, his hips a little. His legs really going to step back. But that isn't all. We're actually going to click on him. 
we're gonna grab the center key and put it right on the center of the guy or the anchor. You can hit position, rotate scale, and we're gonna keep it how it is here. And now we're actually just gonna give him a little bit. Well, actually, he might might not do much, but I think I'm just gonna move him back a little further. So in the whole space, he moves back a little bit as well. So it looks like uh, this. I'll do a ramp preview. Now we're gonna do the same with the blue guy. Hit U to ramp your keyframes. You can see where they all are. I go over to five seconds. Now for this guy, go back to your, uh, go back to this. For this guy, we're gonna have him. He's gonna aim down a little bit. So we don't wanna stretch it too much. So you gotta be careful how you tweak it. Bring this back. Shoulders gonna come up a little. His legs are both gonna come up. So they're both gonna come up like this. That's gonna come up quite a bit. Go back to your first frame, hit position, scale, and rotation. Keyframe them all here. Go to the end. And this one, we're gonna move him up a little. A little this way. Give him a little rotate. Just gonna go, then you just test it, make sure it's something you like. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Just a quick, or a slow movement of the one guy going up and the other guy aiming at him. What I'm actually gonna do is go to the beginning and tweak it a bit right now because I'm not too happy with it. I'm gonna make his leg a little further down so it looks like he's just stretching a little further up when he does it. Get him in a bit. It's gonna be something like that. He jumps up towards him. So that's the basic one for the tutorial I watch. Now I'm gonna do a few steps to make it look more realistic because it's very, very plain. So first we're gonna do is add depth of field. We're gonna do the cop out way and just use fast blurs on all of them. So we put fast blur on, um, click repeating edges. Actually only click repeating edges on the background one. Red and blue don't have repeating edges. So background one, click repeating edges. Uh, click E to bring up all your effects. Bring out all the fast blurs. I gotta move my mic. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start where we are focused on the red guy. So the red guy's gonna be in focus, but we're gonna move almost uh, three quarters of a second. Put a keyframe here. Now for the blue guy, we're gonna put him about because he's closer to the red guy. He'll be a little out of focus, so we're gonna have him about. Uh, uh, that's a little too much. We're gonna have him about. Four, four on the blur. The background is gonna be more, more out of focus because it's further back. So we're gonna put that one to about a twelve for now. So it's a, it's a little strong, but we're gonna have it here, and we're gonna move to about the three second mark. And this is where we want the blue guy in focus. So the blue guy is gonna become perfectly in focus. The background's still gonna be out of focus, but it's gonna be a little less out of focus. So we're gonna bring this one down to around six. Now we're gonna have the red guy go up to about 10. Okay, so we got them there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, some parallax and make it a little more 3D. So we're gonna go layer, new, camera. I'm just gonna use the basic camera here. That's a custom camera, but let's just use a 50 mil camera. Put it on here, we're gonna make the layers, the front, a blue and red layer, we're gonna make them 3D. Position, position. Now we already tweaked the position a bit, so I guess that was that was my fault. But we're gonna use the red one and bring him closer in. We're gonna have him about here. So I'm moving him so he's closer towards the camera like he would be. I have it at uh quite a high number. I'm gonna have it where he was going even closer to the camera as he moved a bit. Now the blue guy I'm going to move forward a little bit too. I put it about, I got it at minus 80, but it's up to you, it depends on the scene. He's moving a little closer too, and the background stays the same. So you might, neighbor, might not be able to notice too much, but we're going to go into camera, uh, transform. Now if you play around with the camera tools, if you click unified camera tool, you can see that these two move a bit. So you get, we're going to tweak how they move a little here. So we already have the people moving, now we're gonna make the camera move and we're creating parallax. So the way they're moving in the background staying still. The foreground moves faster while the midground moves a little bit. So 
I'm going to just put all my keyframes in right here um, just to be safe for now. We're going to go something like just tweaking it right now. Just, hmm. I think I made a mistake. The background layer I'm going to make 3D as well now. Yes, that was the sorry correction. You have to make the background layer 3D as well, but don't change its position. I'm going to have something. So now we got a little bit more movement here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have it zoom in a bit. So I'm going to have it start here, and when it gets to the end, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to bring him so he's more in the center of the frame. All right, and here's what it looks like. I'm going to, there's going to be black bars, so that's why I left some of the the bottom there has an opening. Now we're just gonna make it look a little nicer as well. So that's that's the movement. That's the basic pin warp. Um, just added some depth of field and add some parallax with them moving because we created it in a 3D space with the camera. Now what I'm gonna do is make a second composition, put this one in it, and just add some color correction, some CC lens, and uh, I would say motion blur, but there really isn't any motion blur. Maybe we add a lens flare, or something something cheesy like that. All right, you can add something like a lens flare, which I just did. Um, just to add some more to it uh, as long as you're not too cheesy. So I just have it glowing off his scope right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale up the whole composition here. I'm going to scale it just so it's right outside. Like just so it's out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is go wiggle position. So I type in wiggle in uh, effects presets and you'll find wiggle position. Add it on there. I'm going to change the amount 14 so, uh, amount and speed. I'm going to put it back to 1, test it again. Yeah, it's a little more aggressive. Like the camera's shaking more, is what it feels like. So now we took uh, the very still image and made it, made it look like this. So we took, uh, this is just taken from those two still images. We created our own 3D space and made it look like we faked the camera and the depth of field. And after that, you can just add your color correction and really any other effects you want. And that's how I do the pin warp effect.